and embryonic stem cells. You'll be using those cells to try to help people with spinal cord injuries. How's that work proceeding? Have you begun to treat patients yet? Well, we haven't started enrolling subjects in the trial sites yet, um, but we're making very good progress in initiating the sites, meaning going through all of the education and the teaching sessions required to get the trial to start. So we have several IRB approvals, and we're really on track to begin the first patient treatment in June or July. Dr. Rukarma, Jaron's clearance from the FDA came just a couple of days after President Obama took office. And then in March, the president said he'd lift the restrictions on federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. How has that climate shifted? Do the ethical issues raised by opponents of this type of research give you pause? Well, unfortunately, the climate hasn't shifted much at all. First of all, we generated the timing of the approval in January by the date at which we last submitted the final written amendment to the IND. So we controlled that. It had nothing to do with the administration change. Uh, the executive order uh, made in March, unfortunately, is a low-hanging political fruit. What remains to be seen is what Congress does to codify that executive order, and more importantly, what policies the NIH now uh, uh, creates in order to open the funding gates for our academic colleagues. Companies like Geron are only affected indirectly right. in that we have to pay the fee for our academic collaborators. Uh, and and uh, Dr. Okarma, as I mentioned, what about the ethical concerns? Well, they remain an issue for people who do believe in installment and do have issues with the consumption of these embryos that are destined for destruction that are no longer needed to achieve pregnancy. But I do think that this is a normal course of events as a very large idea, the notion of using these cells to really regenerate tissue permanently right. becomes real. And as the value to healthcare and to individual patients becomes manifest, I think those issues will abate. Is this just an experiment or can Geron make stem cells for the real world to meet the demand at a reasonable cost? Oh, this is very much real world in that every step we take to make this product for this clinical trial has been rigorously tested and is scalable. Now, we'll certainly make improvements as the demand and, and utility of the cells in, increases. For example, we think the same cell we're using in spinal cord injury may have application in diseases like stroke and Alzheimer's, much larger markets that will require a dramatic scale up in manufacturing efficiency. And, and Dr. But we're learning how to do that. And, and Dr. Karma, there's, there's also some instance where uh, we're talking about uh, maybe heart disease might be examined as well. Well, we have seven other cell types, products, based on embryonic stem cells in the queue. And you're right, heart cells for heart failure is number two. Islet cells for diabetes are number three. We have an immune cell for the cancer vaccine is number four. And in our wholly owned subsidiary in the UK, chondrocytes for arthritis are making terrific progress. Dasha, uh, we have about 30 seconds left. Last month, you told Bloomberg News, quote, we are treating a desperate patient population that has no hope of recovery whatsoever. What would a breakthrough mean, not just for those patients, but for science as a whole? Well, it would be tremendous news for the platform of regenerative medicine. It would be incredible news for spinal cord injury in general. And for us as a company pioneering this work, it opens the door to a really new era in treating patients with chronic disease, one that goes beyond pills and scalpels right. to achieve a permanent restoration of function. Dr. Thomas O'Karma, President and CEO of Geron, joining us from San Francisco. Thanks. And we'll continue our exclusive series on what's new in the business of stem cell research tomorrow. We'll sit down with Alan Trunson, the president of the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. Then on Friday, we'll talk with the president of Osiris Therapeutics, Randy Mills. That company is leading in the adult stem research area. We'll be right back.